Welcome to Emergency Insights, the podcast where we bring critical care knowledge to the front lines. I'm Dr. James Carter, and today we're tackling a neurologic emergency that demands immediate attention, status epilepticus. Joining me is Dr. Emily Zhao, a neurologist and emergency medicine specialist. Dr. Zhao, thank you for being here. Thank you, Dr. Carter. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is status epilepticus? Status epilepticus is continuous seizure activity lasting five minutes or more, or repeated seizures without a return to normal consciousness between episodes. This isn't just a prolonged seizure, it's a neurological emergency. Why is status epilepticus considered such an urgent condition? Because prolonged seizures can cause irreversible brain damage and even death. The longer the brain seizes, the higher the risk. Early recognition and immediate treatment are essential to reduce morbidity and mortality. In an emergency setting, what's the very first step when a patient presents with a seizure that doesn't stop? Stabilization is paramount. We first ensure the patient's airway is protected, breathing is adequate, and circulation is maintained, the ABCs. Hypoxia and hypotension must be corrected quickly to prevent secondary brain injury. Once the patient is stabilized, what's our first-line pharmacologic intervention? We use benzodiazepines. Intravenous lorazem is preferred due to its efficacy and duration of action. If IV access isn't available, diazepam can also be used. Alternatively, midazolam can be administered intramuscularly, intranasally, or buccally, especially useful in pre-hospital settings. And if the seizures persist after benzodiazepines? Then we move quickly to second-line anti-epileptic drugs. These include phosphenitoin, phinenitoin, leviteracetam, or valproate. Timely administration is critical. We don't wait for drug levels or EEG results before giving these agents. Let's talk about the more severe cases. How do we manage refractory status epilepticus? Refractory status epilepticus, where seizures persist after both benzodiazepines and second-line agents, requires intensive care. We initiate continuous IV infusions of anesthetic agents like midazolam, propofol, or barbiturates. These patients need EEG monitoring to assess seizure suppression and guide dosing. Supportive care must be ongoing during all this. What should clinicians be vigilant about? Several things. Early IV or intraosseous access is crucial. Blood glucose must be checked immediately. If hypoglycemia is found or suspected, we give dextrose. And in malnourished or alcoholic patients, thiamine should precede glucose to prevent Wernicke's encephalopathy. Are there common causes of status epilepticus that clinicians should be looking for during initial management? Absolutely. Seizures can result from CNS infections, brain lesions, metabolic disturbances, withdrawal syndromes, or toxic exposures. Identifying and addressing the underlying cause is as important as stopping the seizures themselves. In pre-hospital or non-hospital settings, what emergency options do we have to stop seizures? Buccal midazolam and rectal diazepam are both effective and can be administered by caregivers or first responders. These routes provide rapid control and can prevent progression to status epilepticus before the patient reaches the hospital. Timing seems to be a recurring theme here. How does it impact patient outcomes? Time is brain. Treatment should begin within five minutes of seizure onset. Every minute matters. Rapid intervention improves seizure control, reduces complications, and ultimately saves lives. Dr. Zhao, this has been incredibly valuable. Any final message for our listeners? Yes, status epilepticus is a true emergency. Recognize it early, act quickly, and escalate treatment without delay. The faster we intervene, the better the outcomes for our patients. Thank you, Dr. Zhao. That wraps up our discussion on status epilepticus. For more clinical updates and frontline education, stay tuned to Emergency Insights. I'm Dr. James Carter. Thanks for listening, and stay sharp out there.